Well, I'm going to now reanalyze my three examples from the slide before, from the point of view of a characteristic polynomial. Before, it was like an ad hoc solution. We just guessed, we were guessing. With the diagonal matrices, we were guessing the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh, for the third example, we were just given a candidate for the eigenvector. This time, we're going to do the proper analysis via the characteristic polynomial. Look at this. Here's my first example, the example from the slide before. Diagonal matrix, A1, A2, 0, elsewhere. If I go after characteristic polynomial, here's the formula, how I do that, how I recover the characteristic polynomial. Here it is. Well, actually, that's the matrix first. So if I compute this matrix, A take lambda I2, it's very easy matrix, it's like this. It remained diagonal, by the way, isn't it? Because if you subtract two diagonal matrices and identity matrix as a diagonal matrix, it will be another diagonal matrix. So if I compute the deter determinant of this, again, it's another interesting feature of diagonal matrices. Determinant of diagonal matrix is, what is it? It's a product of elements on a diagonal. That's how we compute. That's how easy we can compute determinant of a diagonal matrix. So if I go after determinant of this matrix, which is a diagonal matrix, my characteristic polynomial is simple product of two linear factors, a1 take lambda, a2 take lambda. And given that eigenvalues are solutions to the, dia to the characteristic polynomial, is my two solutions, a1 and a2. So P, a, P sub a of lambda equals 0 when either lambda equal a1 or lambda equal a2. The same eigenvalues we guessed before, now we establish them analytically. We saw them analytically with the help of this criterion, this theorem. Any questions? The same similar analysis, very analogous uh, analysis for the n times n diagonal matrix. Look at this. If I have a matrix A, which is a diagonal matrix, but this time of size n is my entries. What can I say now? First, I make the observation that if I take the identity matrix of size n, that's another example of a diagonal matrix. Look, if I use my efficient notations for the diagonal matrices, look how efficiently I can write identity matrix. Here it is. It's a diagonal matrix with the entries 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 on it, on the diagonal. One here repeated n times. It's, a, it's, a, it's really efficient notations for the diagonal matrices, this diag thing. Now look at this. If I compute A take lambda I n, if I subtract two diagonal matrices, if I scale diagonal matrix, it will be scaling of diagonal entries, of course. This will be another diagonal matrix with the entries like this. A1 take lambda, A2 take lambda, many others like this, A n take lambda. And as I mentioned before, determinant of a diagonal matrix, it's simple product of elements on the diagonal. So if I compute the determinant of my matrix, which is the characteristic polynomial associated with the matrix A, that will be the product of the linear factors A1 take lambda, A2 take lambda, AN take lambda. And again, we recover now analytically the same result we guessed before by just relying on our advanced knowledge of matrix multiplication. We recover this result analytically. We can now say, we can now say that my characteristic polynomial vanishes if and only if my lambda takes one of the diagonal values, either lambda A1 or A2 or many others like this. The last one will be A n. The same set of eigenvalues we guessed before, we recovered analytically.